In the chapter, Eradicating Worry, on page 84, Darwin tackles the whole complex struggle to eliminate worry from our consciousness. Baba says there are few things that rob our psyche of energy more than worry. In most cases, because worry isn't often experienced as something of serious and tangible consequences. It is seen as something relatively harmless, a nagging bother, but it surreptitiously drains our vitality during the course of the day. I was always amazed at how worry seemed to be absent from Darwin's consciousness. He had a supreme trust and faith in Baba that I was unable to achieve myself. It was something to behold. He would quote Baba, don't worry, let me do the worrying. I enjoy working things out. In the difficult situations in his life, Darwin always honored Baba's wish to work things out himself. He had the humility to ask for Baba's help, not to stand in the way and try to do it all himself. Eradicating worry is one of the last hurdles to be crossed in gaining control of the mind. It requires several attainments, among them not to make so much of the outer events of life so that they become secondary to the inner life, to become more profoundly aware of the deluding power of imagination. Mark Twain, the American humorist, once said, I've been through many trials and tribulations in this life, and most of them never happened. In addition, we must strive to unfailingly hold our mind accountable for its misleading assertions. Otherwise, our worrisome mental patterns will only continue. As long as worry preoccupies our mind, the ego center stage and our focus on Baba is pushed to the background. But when Baba is in the foreground, when we return to him again and again in thought, worries automatically dissolve in his loving presence. What are some of the method methods you use to overcome worry? When you have trouble controlling worrisome thoughts, do you have ways of giving this fearful emotion to Baba? When the imaginary worry about some situation is over, do you say to your mind, you said I should have been worried about this situation and it turned out everything worked out fine. Can you look back on your life to all the adverse and disagreeable things you thought would happen and see that it was all worry for naught. Have you experienced Baba's actual intervention in rescuing you from a seemingly impossible situation? How deep is your faith that Baba is truly there to help? Whatever you do though, don't worry about worrying. I once asked Meherchi Kakaria, one of Baba's intimate mandali, what method he had for overcoming worry. He gestured with his hands circling around his head as if besieged by thoughts. Around Baba, I was always worrying. And read this last uh, bit here too. The Doug Ross? Yeah. Okay. Doug Ross, a Baba lover from the San Francisco Bay, Bay Area, has made an audio recording of the entire book, Effort and Grace, which you can access and listen to even as you go for walks or when you're driving to work. A precious gift from him. This is his email address until I know the link. Douglas Ross spelled as it sounds, Douglas Ross, D.C., the... Start recording. I think that's okay. Okay. All yeah. right. The end. Douglas Ross. Yeah. Audiobook, Effort and Grace. Stop yeah. recording.
Note 517. Created. Oh, that must be Deborah. Uh, yeah. Deborah, could you mute? Oh, sorry. I, yeah. <laughs> no worries. It's She's just recorded for life. Valuable in, uh, interventions. Um, so let's, um, I, I have some things that I might say later on uh, that that I gathered from Darwin about dealing with worry. I don't know if I'll do that right now, but at some point. But let's uh, start. Let's have um, the birthday woman, lady, read uh, the, the first section there. Wow. Okay. Well, not you ready? Ready? The first two sections, yeah. Okay. Eradicating our worries. <clears throat> love will control the future, so why worry? Do not think, feel my love, Maribaba. It might be a little bit disconcerting when we are confronted with all the things we have to let go of. All our self-centered limitations and weaknesses. But cheer up. What the mind can do, it can undo while continuously making progress on the spiritual path. We can also improve our exterior situation a great deal, whatever it is currently, and we can change our whole outlook on life. Because our subconscious is amenable to hypnotic suggestions, it accepts and supplies whatever conditions we are programming through the universal mind, which is capable of responding to all our wishes and wants our bad ones as well as our good ones. That is why instead of giving us a long and complicated lecture on programming, Mayor Baba gave us in very, very simple terms, the formula, do your best and don't worry, be happy in my love. Program that and all your conditions will change. Oops. Did you want me to keep reading? Yeah, yeah, just go to that next section. A great obstacle. Baba says that worry is one of the greatest obstacles on the spiritual path. It connotes fear, anxiety, and lack of faith. It gnaws at the heart and interferes with our direct line to God. Worry is a form of fear. It creates turbulence in the consciousness that prevents tranquility and bliss. It is only when the lake of the consciousness becomes calm that it reflects the glory of reality of God. Mayor Baba says, <clears throat> worry is the product of feverish imagination working under the stimulus of desires. It is the living through of sufferings that are mostly of one's own creation. Worry has never done anyone any good. And it is very much worse than more dissipation of energy, for it substantially curtails the joy and fullness of life. When Baba said, don't worry, he was indicating that it is possible not to worry. He says that through a Herculean effort, we can overcome worry and be free of it, that our hearts can become free and we will become more courageous in our spiritual endeavors. It is a battle along the spiritual path. It is a major project and great accomplishment when we when we overcome worry. Okay. Now, anybody? How? Um, <clears throat> Anybody have any um, methods that they use that help with worry? That I mean, that, oh, hey, go for it, Tony. Since I'm here, um, I have Baba clearly was calling me today because I came across my version of Effort and Grace, and I saw all my highlightings on this chapter. Um, in just listening to that, my only thought was a, a, a thing from neuro-linguistic programming. In the beginning, Darwin says it might be a, a bit disconcerting 
when we are confronted with all the things we have to let go of, all our self-created limitations and weaknesses. And um, I thought about a, a big, one tip from NLP was that if you think that we have to let go of our self-created limitations and weaknesses, um, all the things we have to let go of, it automatically blocks us thinking about it positively. And it's just easy to replace that with, I get to. So when we're confronted with all the things we get to let go of, all of our self-created limitations and weaknesses, there's, a, there's a, an energy of fearfulness and possibility. And I find that when I do that, then the answer is, well, okay, now how do I let go of this thing? I get to let go. Bob is giving me this opportunity to let go of this. So how do I do it, Bob? How do I do it? Instead of worrying about how do I do this? I don't know if I can do it. I get to let go of it. So how, Bob? How do I tell me how? <laughs> yeah, beautiful so, attitude, you know. Yeah, you kind of do to go into action rather than just stewing in your anxiety. It's the it's the thing it with that, it's the words. It's actually literally the simple thing that seems like it's nothing changing that I ha we have to to we get to. Yeah. And it, it generates a whole different emotional outlook. Yeah. Um, Rada. Well, lately I've really been enjoying Adi's prayer. And I find that phrase in his prayer, it begins, um, Beloved Baba, bless us all, so that in the stress and strain of our daily lives and the fluctuation of our minds, we learn to relax wholly and wholeheartedly and float on the ocean of your love. That phrase, float on the ocean of your love, I, I find really helpful when I'm worried or stressed about something. I just try to go to that and picture myself in that phrase. Um, and that's been really helpful to me. Ah, beautiful. He, um, he wrote that here at the center in the, in the farm shed, the cabin. Wow. I remember he brought that out back in the 70s. Yeah, I like that. I always like that too. Floating, you know, just kind of, instead of being down in the doldrums, kind of floating above this morass a little bit. Yeah. Okay, Anne. Um, I, this sounds really simplistic, so I hope it's not like Mayor Baba, remedial Mayor Baba. But um, I have been, I think as you know, I've only recently kind of re-embraced Baba. He's, I've had his pictures and said his prayers in the car, but it's been at a long distance for some time. And um, when I was first involved, I was very much like a child. You know, Baba was like a parent and I, I listened and I went to meetings and all this kind of stuff. But now I'm realizing it's sort of like, What's my responsibility in terms of being, I want to say a better Baba follower, but that's not what I mean, in terms of being just more in relationship with him. And I have lately been sort of doing a macrame on a macrame of worry about this and that stuff's come up. And um, I've discovered that there's a real association between being worried and uptight and really negative thinking, you know, judgmental and, you know, all the stuff that one does that just like takes an ax to so many people or people that have disappointed you or whatever. Um, so I've just started going when this comes up to try to remember to just say Mayor Baba, Mayor Baba, Mayor Baba over and over again. So my head gets to be my own personal, if you call it a job. Um, and I have this weekend kind of poked in and out of, uh, there's a wonderful organization, the Nature Journaling Club, that's now international. That the, the pilot light for this was a wonderful man by the name of Jack Muir Laws, who lives in California. And it's a five day conference, and I've been going to some of the, the online things and partaking in some of the discussions. And something really opened up for me. And I think it, 
it has to do with Baba. And it was talking about <clears throat> in our journals, drawing or writing, we do it because we're expressing ourselves and we want to remember something. But this is a very sharing community. And we also do it to share what we've observed. Like you might say, hey, guess what I saw on the way home to somebody you cared about. Um, and it was like this connection. And it's so simple, but I realized that I've spent a lot of years feeling really disconnected. And it, it, so I'm I'm trying in the Mayor Baba, I'm connecting to him, um, but also connecting to other people and being open to connection, just as people, but also as the way that Baba breathes through all of us. And um, this, the last couple of days, I was going to go, go going out walking in nature helps, doing qigong helps, doing mayorbara helps. Um, but my back went into a, a spasm two days ago. So I couldn't go out and walk in nature and I couldn't do the nature journaling and do all the things I planned to do. And I thought, Baba, what are you doing? Um, and yet it, 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 kept me focused in a certain kind of a way. And today when I sort of opened up, I hope I'm not being too incoherent here. The sense it was like Baba saying, it's about connection. It's about, you know, meeting of hearts and minds. Um, and letting that thought in, most of the spasm went away. So I, I kind of feel like I'm stumbling along here and finding a way. And it's like, I'm struggling and worrying and trying not to worry and worrying about not worrying and all of the stuff that goes with it. And then it, as I work with it, there'll be a little, a little opening like today. It's like, yeah, I'm here. You're connected. Keep going. You can do this. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, it, it's hard to worry if you're feeling Bob's presence kind of uh, tends to dissolve a lot of it. Okay. Michelle. Jay Baba, um, I just have something very really short. Yeah. Well, in my situation, and I think Jeff actually just answered it, I think I feel Baba's presence so greatly. I just am surrendered and I'm really not worrying because I really feel that he put an incredible care team with it together. But I just want to just say that um, a friend was wondering how I was doing, and then I just wrote, I said, wiped out, yet held buoyant, cradled in his love. And like Audie's prayer, that's what I'm feeling. And I guess in these moments that we are facing by death, her harrowing pain, um, that, you know, he takes our hand. So we don't have to worry because he's taking it on for us. And, um, and I'm not saying that I didn't have afternoon, some things going on going, oh no, where it just rides up. And, um, but that I don't want to ramble. Jay Baba, much love to all of you. Yeah, no, you're beautiful that Baba is there with you through in this most difficult time. And I've seen that at the end of many people's lives that Baba shows up. I don't want it to be the end, but yeah, look, well, at, I don't know if you can see this over here, this by the window, this beautiful window that we kind of created. And there's a picture of Baba looking out of Mondale Hall. And um, let's see. Oh, dear. And so there's the yeah. fabric and there's the photograph. And my girlfriend brought some beautiful flowers. So I look out the window. You know, you want to take the picture. So to pick up the picture. Here, let me just show this picture. So we put this picture by the window, and the curtains are kind of like that. So it's it's really beautiful. And um, we got this Phyllis Ott painting right there. And I got the ancient one. I don't know if you can see that. So I kind of moved bedrooms. So I'm in my little building this cozy place until my till the vertebrae heals that I can get out of here. Uh, it's a very humbling experience. 
And I guess it, it's my family opportunity to serve, which I'm, you know. If I'm, later on you, they get that, that you can get that um, guitar, you're more than welcome to play. Oh, it's sitting the right over there. Well, I'll, I'll think about that. Yeah, think to about it, it and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come back to you for sure. Okay, well, I'll see what I can come up with. <laughs> Paula. You're muted. Uh, Hello? There you are. You're good. Jay Baba, everybody. Um, well, I've had this um, this uh, opportunity this past, um, I guess, like week and over a week now. Um, I had had a, a mammogram. I had had cancer about six years ago on the left side. And then when I went for a yearly mammogram, it, they saw this area that um, they wanted to explore more because of my history. And so I had a biopsy the other day. So this waiting time is um, this opportunity to certainly um, surrender this to Baba. And, um, you know, I'm really surprised because I remember six years ago, I was working as a nurse and um, had my doctor called me and she told me that I had had cancer. And that just started a whole roll of a whole journey. And um, so here I had to do the other, you know, a, a, another biopsy the other day. And um, um, so one thing is, I'm not, I'm not like hysterical. I'm not, you know, I mean, I believe it's, I don't believe it is cancer this time. I really don't, but I have to be prepared if it is. And, um, like there's this knee sur knee replacement surgery I'm looking forward to on December 8th. And it's like, I don't have time for cancer, but it's not mine to say what's going to appear. So um, I am just feeling um, held by Baba and um, I am just um, in a place of uh, a surrender um, I did some art around um, the word faith today, because that's what I have to have right now is is faith that um, everything happens um, the way it's supposed to happen. And um, I just have to um, surrender any, um, I guess, any wishes of my own, because there's a larger picture and I don't know what that that is right now. So um you know, this, I mean, life just keeps happening. Life just keeps happening. Um, every day there's opportunity for um, learnings about um, surrender. And um, at some level, I'm just totally grateful that I'm being held and I feel accompanied and um, I'm not alone, you know. So anyhow, that's what I want to. Oh, beautiful. Here. Yep. What a great companionship we have. Okay, Ben. Hey, guys. Um, I wanted to say that when Ron and um, Michelle last Sunday, and I'm just new to this group coming in live, I always, always used to watch the videos, but when those two sang, remember last, was it last Sunday night? They both sang. Yeah. And I, there's a certain, um, I don't know how to say it, hopelessness in certain music. It's, it's when you really turn it over in certain music. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's all kinds of music and all kinds of vocal tonalities that through, through the music bring all kinds of messages on many levels, right? I mean, isn't that, that's an accurate, that's gotta be an accurate statement. I mean, there's a different feeling coming from Taylor Swift or whatever than there is from, and when those two sang last week, I I, I, I felt so much happier um, or better or lift uplifted, I think is the word, because I noticed at the end of the meeting, I looked back, I thought, my gosh, I really enjoyed, I took into my heart what they were singing. 
Um, and so in certain times in music, in certain, oh, minor keys, I just saw a chat about that. Uh, but yeah, minor keys, right? I mean, you know, um, but I think what I'm trying to say is that words, <laughs> I remember that day that Adi came over in 19, it was 1979, Jeff, that you mentioned, and he came over, you know, from the farm shed and, and he gave a two o'clock talk and, and he told us, he got up on stage and told us that he had just made up this poem. So of course, everybody made sure they got their hands on it. And I carried it around like the biggest treasure in my life. You know, just I'd carry it around. I said, I'm going to memorize this thing. And I had it memorized in two weeks. And I've had it with me, you know, kind of like a, a fourth or maybe a fifth or sixth back up to the three prayers all these years since 1979. But I can't get the... I'm sorry. It's like I, I just... <laughs> it doesn't... It doesn't uplift me like those two bits of music we heard because they're words. And I'm not knocking that prayer. It's a fantastic prayer. But, and every time I say it, I say, well, I should say out his prayer now, you know, and then I say it and I, I go like, well, I, I just can't, um, I can't penetrate that. I think that's the part that's difficult, you know. I think we're all talking, at least I'm thinking when we talk about this topic that was read earlier, is yeah, that's that's great, but I can't do it, you know? I can't do it. But when I hear a simple piece of music sung from the heart, like those two sang, I, that gets through to me, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, we'll see if we can get Michelle at some point a little later on, for sure. Now she's really on the spot. Well, I didn't mean to do that, Michelle, but I, let me tell you that you don't even have to try. It, it's not like, you know, just just the, the simpleness. And then Ron had the same thing. The, the she, sang, she sang from her hospital bed the other day. Yeah. She, she no, that was the one I was talking about. Yeah. And and I don't know what the reason was, but anyway, I'll shut up. You know, my point was that... I. Sometimes music can get to my heart where all of the prayers in the world, you know, I don't know how to say it. All the words in the word, a world, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. I just can't do it. I'm sorry. Jeff, Jeff didn't Baba say singing was close to godliness? Uh, well, uh, cleanliness. No. Uh, in my oh, did Baba say that music is the shortest path to God? And she said, no, singing is the shortest path to God. So it's, Can you say that again, Jeff, louder? Uh, uh, Mani was asked in Mandalay Hall, did Baba say that, that music is the shortest path to God? And she said, no. Baba said, singing is the shortest path to God. It can take you so quickly to a deep place. You know, you can be like, you know, Ben Slavic there stuck in Colorado and down in the doldrums and you sing him a song and the guy changes just like that. It's incredible. Hey, well, buddy, it's got it. <laughs> we got Rada now to. <clears throat> yeah. I was going to say what you just, I was going to say what you just said, Jeff, that I, I find Ben just like you that sometimes music is the thing that can really get me out of a mood. You know, if I'm worried about something or if I'm, you know, something's happened that surprised me that I'm having a transition with. Um, like the other day, uh, I was actually working on a meeting that we did in the LA Center that we called Practicing the Presence of God. And we included music in it. And something happened in the week before, and I got, I was, I was down, you know? And then I just went, we're gonna practice that song. You know, my husband and I were gonna sing a song together. And so we started singing and immediately that mood shifted, you know? 
So I I totally understand what you're saying and uh, feel the same way many times. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Marianne. Oh, thank you. I This is a very quick sharing, really prompted by what everything that everybody is bringing forth here, because I don't have it written down, the quote, but in quoting Baba over the years, I know one is in the discourse. You know, we're here to balance the head and the heart with the heart leading the way. That's intuition, and that is God. And the other is that somewhere Baba said, the most direct connection to the divine and I may not have every word correct, is nature and the arts. And so that's such a vast, you know, spectrum. And so I have been going through the last few years, I went through a lot of trauma. A lot of people know I hit and run accident, near death experience, three and seven months. Um, and then I just got, came through COVID. So it's been all of my, my defenses ripped away from me, no longer having a mask to kind of try to protect me. So I really, I'm the original worry wart. And so I've worked on that for many decades of not worrying and trusting and trusting in Baba and do all of the ways, Baba's name and everything, meditation, prayer, everything. But it's come up kind of in my face again. And I thought, okay, Baba, it's for the final letting go. I get it, I get it. So I notice my resistance to surrendering that there's that no, the human mirroring that says, no, 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 I'm going to stay in my old patterns. And so I know I, so I've, I was able to only through God, only through Baba's grace. I live in New York city. So central park is like my, my back, my uh, backyard. And uh, that's my nature now that I'm not traveling. And so I just, the last few days, I just went I mean, I go there every day anyway, but just getting my shoes off, getting on the ground. And so I played the harmonica. So I sat on a rock and played the harmonica. And I, I didn't want to do any of this. You know, Baba said, I will not fulfill any of your wants anyway. Yeah, you know, I will fulfill every need. So I could tell Baba was helping me take the action steps, but I didn't want to. And I brought my my drawing pad with me to draw some cartoons and things. And I really, it's not like I shifted into bliss, but I shifted into, I can see like nature and the earth as being in the moment. I shifted so much into the moment by playing some music and singing and doing my drawing and getting my feet on the ground and lying down and look at the sky. So I feel like I'm just kind of hanging on, <laughs> but I, I have all of these ways I'm hanging on through that, you know, the nature and the arts. So thank you for everybody sharing. I just want to share that because I've done so much transformational work in my life, but here I am again with that in my face to deal with again on a higher level. Thank you. And it is on a higher level too. Okay. Gita. Solomasi. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, are we talking about worry here? Is that the topic? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, there was, um, I wanted to get on that. It's been a while since I've been on. And just bear with me on my new computer. I was thinking about um, a time several years ago when I, I was new on a job. And I was desperate for the job and I landed it and I work at night and I had a very, I have a very bad dream boss. He was a very bad dream boss. I think he's alcoholic and maybe doing drugs. And he's the kind of guy where I didn't want to make a mistake. And I would, you know, call him up in the middle of the night to ask him questions because that's the only option. I work at night. So he was a supervisor. I'd have to call him and he'd badger and he'd get upset. And I say to myself, well, what else do you expect me to do? You're the supervisor. I got to call you. And um, as an example of this guy, um, there was a new guy we had. And he had a question. He was a new guy that had a question at the beginning of the shift about the cell phone. And my boss called me up asking me, can you believe this guy? And I'm saying, I don't understand what, what the problem is. Um, that's kind of his mentality. But anyway, I remember being petrified to ask questions. 
I'm scared. I'd lose keys, misplaced keys galore. And I started talking to Bob about it. And he would tell me, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Sometimes he'd say, don't even think about what's ailing you here. And that was mind blowing to me. And there were several incidents that happened where I was just in like a state of panic. But I remember having a dispatch call and it something went wrong on it. And I was blamed and I told my boss that the, the app doesn't work properly. It's not my fault, the app doesn't work properly. And he said, you're gonna go in for Marie, remedial training. And that was gonna be right before Thanksgiving or right before Christmas. And I was in a panic over absolute dread going to work. And I remember going into the office, seeing the lights on, nobody was there. And there was a card that was saying Merry Christmas. And for some reason, I realized all the worry, all the drama I had in my mind had little to do with reality. I had drummed up the scenario that was gonna hit. And after that, I think it was the last time I really had worry, like deep worry in my mind. I have anxiety, I have fears, and very rarely does worry exit my mouth but i think having heard baba tell me enough times don't worry about it there's nothing to worry about i have it covered there's nothing to worry about don't even think about it and somehow it had a transformative effect to take i don't want to say all the worry away but at least dramatically reduce it like i said i have fear i have anxiety but um yeah i did just wanted to speak of that thank you i'll pass thank you hey well let's go on to the next um let's see who who's got who's the victim here bob <laughs> okay there's antidote to and, the uh, antidote to the worry syndrome right yeah okay <clears throat> We must keep our minds clear about what we are programming. Our subconscious mind is like a giant, all-powerful genie that complies with our general thought patterns. If we worry, the genie says, yes, master, and magically produces something for us to worry about. We therefore think my worry was justified because the very thing I worried about happened. It creates a syndrome where we continue to worry and something worrisome happens. The antidote to worry is trust and faith in God. Therefore, in order to overcome worry, we have to conjure up more faith, more trust. Our hearts have to become stronger in faith instead of quavering in worry and fear. Counteracting worry through building our faith and trust opens up a vast new area of possibilities for self-improvement self within and also in our outer life. But mainly it opens up the way for spiritual unfoldment, for growing closer to God, to reality. Meher Baba says, live more and more in the present, which is ever beautiful and stretches away beyond the limits of the past and the future. If at all you must worry, let it be how to remember me constantly. This is worthwhile worry, because it will bring about the end of worry. Think of me more and more, and all your worries will disappear into the nothing they really are. My will works out to awaken you to this. If we really believe that Baba is our dearest friend, that he is omnipotent, and that he is on our side and working for us, we will stop worrying and trust him. As he said to us in 1962, what is there to worry about? Nothing. So don't worry. Let Baba do the worrying. He enjoys working things out. There is no need for both you and Baba worrying. If you are going to worry, then Baba won't worry. So stop worrying and leave everything to Baba to take care of. When you do not worry, it becomes Baba's responsibility. 
By putting our full trust in Baba, we are placing our lives completely in his hands and daring to not worry. This is something we can learn to do. This can be part of our programming work. <clears throat> you know, uh, that line there, um, I, I remember a little bit differently, where Baba says, don't worry, let me do the worrying, I enjoy working things out. There's no need for you and I worrying. If you're going to worry, then I won't worry. And that has been very helpful because when uh, Baba, Baba says he actually enjoys working things out. Somehow I, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't, I mean, that I never really quite heard that. But uh, so when I'm worrying about something, I'm, I think to myself, I'm robbing Baba of something he enjoys doing. So I kind of back off from worrying. And of course, he's got a lot more options than I do on working out things. But that's helped me a lot. Sometimes I'll find myself worrying and saying like, you know, I'm robbing him of something he enjoys. He enjoys working these things out for us. And I'm kind of cutting him out of the picture with my own worry. So that, that's been very helpful to me. I thought I saw someone over there in the corner with their hand up. Denise, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, last week I mentioned that Jesus mm -hmm. has always been in my life. And I feel like before I even knew the name Mayor Baba, Baba was with me because as a young woman, young girl even, I really didn't worry. I always had this uh, feeling that I was in a movie and God was directing it. So, I, I mean, I know we have free will and everything, but I just always thought he's planning all of this so you know it, I'm just have to go with it <laughs> you know just see what happens next I, I remember as a child they thought maybe I had polio and I thought well I guess this is the new thing that you know the, ne the next event that Baba has for me well I didn't say Baba because I didn't know Baba until I was older but but now it's not like I've forgotten that that I'm in a movie because I <laughs> I still feel that way in some in some respects, but it's a whole different thing when you're a mom and you start worrying about your kids. And I have to really go back to Baba all the time and say, remind me, Baba, remind me yeah. that I don't have to do this worrying. And he usually does remind me and I, I maybe I'm in denial sometimes because I know that worrying does you make make you ill and I've had my share so I don't know if that's the reason but it's something to think about anyway those are just the thoughts that came to me yeah. and what a beautiful state you were in in childhood to think that this is all God doing this and it's got to be all right because he's doing it. That's just, and, and we are going to get back to that state. And that's the state that I felt Darwin had. He just had like faith that, that Baba was looking after everything. And he didn't get in the way. I, I mean, I, 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 I haven't been able to get to that place. But it was really nice to see it in somebody else. <laughs> Rich. Yeah, um. I guess I'm kind of feeling a little bit out of it and I'm listening, but um, I, you know, I've done a lot of reading like everyone here, but uh, for some reason when in, with Baba approaching this topic of worry, um, it seems a little bit difficult for me, but what I have noticed, the primary thing I've noticed is negativity in me. If I'm, if I have a negative thought about anything, a critical thought, like, 
uh, oh, that guy shouldn't be, or, or, or look at that, or whatever. A critical thought. They don't take care of their lawn, you know. I mean, anything negative, just negative. That's, for me, it's a source of worry. And so the negativity is actually, evidently, worry being expressed through my mind as criticism or critical. So I'm saying, well, I have perfect thoughts. I have a perfect idea, blah, blah, blah. But in the meantime, I'm being negative towards anybody, something, you know. I remember one time I was driving and, and uh, I don't know, someone kind of cut me off or something happened. And uh, this was a long time ago. And for some reason, I thought, wait a minute. I'm going to put Bobo on that guy. I'm going to put Bobo on that guy right now. And I did it. And all of a sudden, bam, the whole angst and uh, uh, energy, negative energy about that situation changed completely. I just let it go completely. And uh, that was a kind of a remarkable event for me. But there was something else I was thinking about, and that's... Uh, I think Baba said something somewhere, I can't remember if it's in Darwin's book, but about feverish imagination. I love that word, that term, feverish imagination. And that goes back to the negativity and the worry. And so what I have gone to doing, and I, you know, I'm getting older, so several of us here are, but when I was younger, this would have been much more difficult. I have gone to really thinking about just Baba or God, who was it that said repeating, and was it Anne repeating Baba's name, even thinking it, not saying it out loud, but repeating Baba's name, just thinking it, Meher Baba, Meher Baba, Meher Baba, just to avoid embracing somehow or diving into that negative stuff, you know? And uh, the other part of this, though, that I think needs mentioning for my sake is you can't be naive about what the world is, about how other people are treating you, how they are, or what they're and scars are about what they're doing, how they may affect you. You can't be naive uh, because if you're naive, you're not really embracing reality. So Bob is not saying, I don't think, oh, forget about reality. It ain't worth worrying about. You know, that's not what I think he's doing. I think he's saying when you face reality and you think you're going to worry about it, think of me. That's it. It's a path. It's a path. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> to see where negativity actually does uh, is one of the sources of worry. Yeah. Okay. Tony. Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey. Um, three things. I, I when I got up to the three, I decided to make notes while I remember. But the first is um, many of you know the story about um. You know, Jeff talking about if, if you worry, then I can't. Um, about Margaret Bernstein's mother, Bunty Kelly, who was one of Margaret's dancers, and she was going to be with Baba in November of November two, I guess it was of sixty two, for the East West Gathering, and Margaret was born in on like July seven, and so Margaret is three and a half months old when she's leaving to India, and. India had just been invaded by China, and it was the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> and so, she, but she went, and at some point, Baba asked her, "How is the baby?" And she she responded, and he said, "Are you worried about her?" And he, she said, "No, Baba, I'm not." And he said, "That's good because if you worry about her, I can't." <laughs> so that's another version of that same comment. Um, I. I I wish I could say I had worry down, <laughs> but um, one thing that's been helpful lately is uh, I didn't think I worried, but you know, aging, I'm, I'm having sort of PTSD, seeing so many people die around me that are my age, my friends, my famous friends who I don't know, but they're like part of my life. But, um, and I try to, you know, choose the thoughts that I'm thinking and the mind gets, is resistant, it's frantic. And I, it was a wonderful awareness. I stopped and I thought, okay, let me just look at my thoughts and, and say, I see you. Yeah, you're doing this. Mm, okay, you're going on and on. I hear it. I see it. It is not me. 
Yeah, but you have a ball and I'm going to tone you down a little bit because, you know, you're getting a little annoying and even a little bit laughing at them. If you remember an old Star Trek episode where the way they got rid of this bad energy on the ship that was making the Klingons fight with the Federation on the ship was just to laugh them off into, into space. <laughs> so I find that's helpful with my my thinking. And um, the other thing which I had thought of before and I was I forgot about it, but I think it was Ben who was talking about music carrying so much that that words don't. And it reminded me of my mother when I was I play the guitar, I sing, I write, I, I later became an actor also. But my mother would say to me when I was playing the guitar, you have to play with feeling. Or if I was singing, you have to sing with feeling. And that was like her main piece of advice. You know, yes, yeah, study your lessons and all that. And um and it's kind I've kind of discovered it's the same with words. If you just say the prayer, kind of the way it sounds, say it, forgive me, Baba, but the way it sounds like it, Baba Samadhi, oh, Pavardiga, the preserver and protector of all. It's like, unless I'm saying it within my heart, it's like, I, it's a drone. And so Adi's prayer, for instance, if you think of the words, the imagery of the words and put feeling into it, I'll just run through it because it's a short prayer. Beloved Mayor Baba, bless us all so that in the stress and strain of our daily lives and the fluctuations of our mind, we learn to relax wholly and wholeheartedly and float on your ocean of love and call for your breath of joy, your breeze of compassion and your wind of strength to flood and inundate every fiber of our body, every corner of our mind, and every space in our heart, to cleanse us of all impurity, and to make us worthy of your love, your obedience, your service, and above all, your pleasure. J. Baba. J. Baba. So it's like Jai singing. Baba. Bringing out the music in the, in the words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. <clears throat> Ron. Yeah. I wanted to uh, say a few things that have, have attached themselves to me over all these years that I still go back to that helped me with this uh, idea of worry. Now, I, I, I wasn't necessarily going to say this, but it just so happens that before I heard about Baba, I had decided that I needed to uh, evaluate everything about myself somehow. I needed to figure out who I was and if I was doing it right. <laughs> and uh, so one day I was just sitting by myself and having a worry. And so it, I, I recognized that I was doing that. And I thought, well, I need to evaluate that. And what I came up with was, uh, it's not very, it's not very pleasurable. It doesn't do a dang bit of good. I couldn't think of a single thing that would, would uh, change or, or help me in any way. So I decided not to do it. And I just, and in, in those days, I was just very much keen on experimenting with everything. So I experimented with not worrying. Shortly after that, I came across the Don't Worry, Be Happy card, which was a very uh, important uh, experience for me. But I won't go into that right now. But rather, I'll say that there are certain uh, things that occur that, uh, you know, upset us. And uh, for instance, one thing, this, this is a small thing. I mean, small compared to the things I've been hearing about and I know that are going on in the world today. But one thing that can get your goat is when you get delayed. Maybe you have an appointment or maybe somebody is counting on you or um, just it becomes a habit. You know, you want to be you, if you want to be on time and all of a sudden you're delayed, you know, you lock your keys in the car or something like that. And uh, But uh, fortunately, a Baba lover friend of my wife's and myself, uh, her mother used to say, uh, Thank God for every delay. And of course, this that whole idea 
is is a big a big picture of that Baba is aware of what's coming and what the impact of everything in the past was and everything now is and everything that will possibly happen that we could worry about, uh, he already knows what it is. And I, I, and I don't know anything about what it is. I have no idea. So why, why would I spend my time worrying about it if I have no idea what it is? Like uh, in, in Dar Darwin's Baba quote, let Baba enjoy himself. He'll work it out. And the, the last thing is Baba's message about uh, take it as a blessing or take it as a test. Whatever happens, happens for the best. And a little addendum to that is, in the end, it will all work out. And if it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. <laughs> right. Thanks, Ronnie. That was great. <clears throat> That's my email signature on my Gmail. <laughs> yeah. Great saying. Yeah. Um, I just heard it this oh, week. Sorry. Oh, well, you, you quoted it perfectly. Ben. I just wanted to uh, thank you, Tony, because <laughs> this is so stupid. I'm sitting here watching you say this prayer that I've kind of always gone like, you know, I don't need to say the prayer because it's just words. Give me a little music, everything I said before. And then here you are going like, hey, you can turn that into some music. You can turn it into some acting. I see the actor in you. And you can make it come alive if these are the avatar's words. They're not exactly you know, chump change, you know. I, and then that that is reflected in this um and I think I have the quote right because I don't want to mess it up. If anybody has heard this and wants to clarify or correct me, please do. But there are those two prayers, you know, the five minutes in the morning. Um, Bob, I now begin entrusting all thoughts, words, and deeds, good and bad to you. And then at the end for five minutes and at the end of the day, um, Bob, I... It's getting to be the end of the day. I'm getting ready to say it now. I'm forgetting it. Baba, I entrust all that I did, thought, or spoke, good and bad to you. Five minutes. And then at the end of this little, the way I understand it, he said, but you have to say it with all your heart. So he, when he when he gave that information, he gave the morning prayer, five minutes, that line, then he gives the evening prayer. And, and then he said, but you have to say it with all your heart. That's when I, I went like, when I first read that, I said, oh, well, now we got a problem here because I can't say it with all my heart. And I'm not going to say it if he said to say it with all your heart and then I don't do it. I'm not going to do that because you know how it can be back to the it can become ritualistic. I, I ain't doing that. And and so. Um, yeah. And Tony I says, i.e. say it with feeling. And so I do. But it's I have to get psyched up. I think we're all buried under um you know literally uh, mountains of words and so now tony thank thank you tony i owe you on that one bro that because that was like yeah uh we don't have to be buried i always felt like i was buried under a mountain of words i worked with words from my living during my life you know and you know what i mean a lot of us did and and now <laughs> but but yeah we can turn it around we can turn it just opened up all possible. I'll be saying it's feeling, spending the whole week thinking about that. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, I, I thought uh, before we go in, I thought I'd kind of give you something I gathered from Darwin, which, you know, became a, a kind of a practice in my life about worry, you know, because most people, they have like a, you know, most of us have a ticker tape of worrisome thoughts that are flowing past our consciousness, you know, from morning till night. And, you know, and we usually consider this as, as you know, something that one of the major things we have to endure. And, you know, cause much of the day is enclosed in a bubble of thoughts and observations and criticisms and evaluations and, 
beliefs, all that kind of thing, and which we view through the lens of the mind. And so, you know, I, I would ask, you know, Darwin, how do you break out of this bubble? And so, and he always felt go go down to to the into the heart to the heart space and see what what are the emotions that are feeding the, our thoughts you know uh, a lot of people they try to counteract thinking with other th thoughts but his method was to go to whatever is feeling you know feeding it and in the case of worry it's fear that's the underlying emotion and if we if we can go down and feel that fear deeply uh, he used to say the deeper the feeling, the deeper the healing. But if you can go down to that feeling of fear, feel it and unpack it, spend time with experiencing it, and then, and then and what I learned from him, and then give that fear energe energetically to Baba before me or within me, I'm imagining that that is flowing to him, and that and it you you can't be at the heart level and think at the same time. You have to go upstairs to think, you know? So if you can stay down at the heart level with the pure emotion, it is much, you know, it, it's a much, uh, and what happens is that then the thoughts begin to slow down tremendously. And, uh, and a corollary to this or complementing this is uh, if you can imagine uh, uh, thoughts are like trains going by and uh and you darwin you you kind of like uh withdraw the tentacles of awareness from being enmeshed in thoughts and you watch the thoughts go by like a train but when the thoughts slow down there's some space between the cars and you can look if it slows down enough you can see the landscape on the other side of the tracks and and that there you're looking into the deeper heart and sometimes the soul. It's still and timeless and and spacious on the other side of the tracks. So anyway, that was a practice that I've adopted from you know from my days with Darwin back in the early seventies. I don't know if that makes sense, but it work, it has worked for me. Janet Jacobs. Colorado is in the house tonight. <laughs> we are. Yeah. I Thank you for what you just said, Jeff. It did make sense. And um, that, especially that deep unpacking business. <laughs> yeah. But I just wanted to say kind of in how I, how I take what, what Ben was talking about. Bob was saying, you know, it has to be said from your heart. Um, I, I, my way of looking, my way of experiencing Baba, I should say, is that he's my Baba, <laughs> my Baba, it, I mean, I, I'll say it rotely, and then I'll say, Baba, I'm just saying this rotely, this is the best I can do right now, I just can't find the juice in my heart to do it, <laughs> in the way that I would like to and what you said, but I'm going to do it rotely now. And as far as I, I just, it's better than nothing. <laughs> that's, that's kind of how I, how, how it feels right to me. I mean, you know, sometimes when I say the Oparvartika prayer in the morning with myself, I mean, it flows like something that's moving through me. And other times I say it and it's like, doesn't. <laughs> That's all I can say. And, you know, one time I was in what the tin shed up on the hill, you know, uh, where they laid Baba's body. And it's the only time I was in, in Maribod, Marib Maribod when, when um, Mara was alive. And it, she was in there, you know, she always put the flowers on each one of the pictures of Baba in the tin shed and kissed it and stuff and kissed him rather and kissed the flower, put it there, kissed him, you know, kissed her fingers, put it on Baba and stuff. And, 
and it, we were in we were there it was just the two of us no one else was in there for a few moments they'd all moved on and she was apologizing because she said oh baba i'm just he be, because she just didn't feel 100% with it you know and i've to me, it was glorious. Afterwards, I just stood there. I didn't even follow Mara. I just stood there and just soaked in the glory of what had just happened. But to her, it wasn't the full meal deal. And I that was so uh, important for me to hear for some reason, because even Mara felt what I think I'm trying to express sometimes. Okay, thank you. Oh, you know what, what you say. The Mondali used to say that they were so rushed in serving Baba, they didn't feel they got to put the full measure of love into what they were doing. It was just everything. They're just, you know, almost mechanical sometimes. And it was painful, but there was a time, you know, a time limit. So they had to move way too fast to do the things. Hey, uh, you know what? Uh, before we go on, we got uh, Michelle. I saw her with a guitar. Where? Oh, you, Michelle, how you up for playing a song? Jay, hey, there's Marvin too. Okay, so Marvin, I kind of Marvin. thought about what you know, Bob kind of wanted to sing. And, um, Michelle, do you have original sound on? Oh, thank you. I did not. Usually I do, but I um, I think these meds are doing a ra rampant on my voice, but um, they do. So this is the second song it's Bob I ever wrote. It was re after reading um, uh, Maris, the Green Book, back in the day. So this is a long time ago. Well, maybe not that long. This is 37 years ago. Holding fast, I'm holding strong, I won't let go your demand. Beloved one, beloved Baba. Holding fast, I'm holding strong, I won't let go of your demand. So out of tune, Jesus, what happened? I tuned. Can, can you turn up a little bit too? I... Uh, is that out of Sorry. Oh, there's the A. That's what was wrong with the little A. Oh. What did you say, sweetheart? Oh, just just a little. Uh, turn your volume up a little bit if you can. Uh, it's on high. I'll just I just move the computer closer. Okay. I just have no, um, <clears throat> I have no power. No power. Well, I Baba, right? Yeah, and you could Baba. start over from the beginning. Holding fast, I'm holding strong, I won't let go of your demand. Beloved one, beloved Baba, holding fast, I'm holding strong, I won't let go of your demand. Gentle tuggings, every day you play upon heart with your silent ways and though you try to take your dumb and the way I'm gonna hang on I'm gonna stay Holding fast, I'm holding strong, I won't let go of your demand. Beloved one, beloved Baba, holding fast. 
last time Bold and strong I won't let go of your demand Awaken me Awaken me The gift you bring Of awakening A caress in silence A breath of spring And though you try to take your dumb man away I'm gonna hang on I'm gonna stay Holding fast, I'm holding strong. I won't let go of your demand. Beloved one, beloved Papa. Beloved Papa. Vashana Tova to everyone in the year. Hare Pada Brahm Allah. Ahura Master God, yes, it done who. Hare Pada Brahm Allah. Ahura Master God, yes, it done who. Adonai. Adonai Eloheinu. Avatar. Avatar me her baba ki Pada pada from Allah. Who the must have got a yes to don who? Pada pada from Allah. A who the must have got a yes to don who? I don't know. Avatar me here, Baba Ki Avatar Avatar me here, Baba Ki Jay. Had it better from Allah. Who the must have got a yes, it done who had it better from Allah. A who the must have got a yes, it done who had a night. Adonai Eloheinu Avatar Avatar me her Baba Ki Jay Avatar Avatar me her Baba Ki Jay Me her Me her Baba Me her me her Baba, me her, me her Baba, had it better from Allah. A hoda must have got a yes, it done who had it better from Allah. A hoda must have got a yes, it done who I don't know. Adonai Eloheinu Avatar Avatar me her Baba Ki Avatar Avatar me her Baba Ki Me her Me her Baba Me her Hair Baba May hair Baba Baba Bravo.
Sorry, my crazy voice. Mostly. <clears throat> okay. Absolutely gorgeous. Tony. Tony, yes. try to Tony, try to beat that. No, I don't <laughs> compete. We don't compete around here. We cooperate. I'm quoting Kenmore when when someone wanted to com compete about the prayer in Mondley Hall. He said to this fellow later, we don't compete around here. Like, who can say the prayer better? We cooperate. Anyway, what I was going to share was these two things about praying by rote. I was at the center once, Myrtle Beach, and I'm, I was pretty sure it was Andy Muir from, uh, from D.C., uh, he had a, a version of Rumi, unlike any other version that's around. I've never seen it again, and but they were so perfect. And he read a few, but one in particular, he read with such feeling, I think he read it twice, that I never forgot it. And the gist of it was, if you can't run to God, then walk to him. If you can't walk to him, then crawl. If you can't offer your sincere, heartfelt prayers, Offer him your dry, hypocritical prayer, for God in his mercy accepts bad coin. <laughs> yeah. And um, and the other one, what was the other thing? Oh, well, I, I, I think most of you know the story, but when Baba was imprinting his energy on the Pavardagar and repentance prayers by having them recited in Mondley Hall. And he would stand for the prayers, even though it was hard for Baba to stand. He had such injuries. And Erich would read out the prayer. Erich could never memorize the prayer. He would get lost in the words. So he had to be reading it out. And he's reading it and Baba's gesturing faster, faster. So he starts reading faster. And and Baba just says more faster, faster, faster. And Erich is, and it happens again and again. And at some point, Erich is reading so fast that you can't even couldn't even grasp the meanings of the words he was saying. And it felt to him like the, the sound was like a train going through a, a tunnel, <laughs> like that. And it was so funny that he started to laugh. And Baba, why are you laughing? And so Erich told him. And he said, Baba said, You're mad. Just do it again now. And so they did the prayer and he did it as fast as he could. And when it was over, Baba said, you have no idea what my participation in this prayer means. It's not the way you're saying it, but the fact that I am participating. And uh, even though it's so hard for me to stand up, he said, what is happening here means that after I drop my body, anyone who says these two prayers will be spiritually benefited. So I, I imagine many or maybe all of you know this, most of you know the story, but that was Erich's story about reading without meaning. <laughs> hey, well, let's go on to the next one. Uh, how is Sabine? Uh, Sabine? Do we still have the time? Yeah, we'll read one one last section here, I guess. What time is it? It is. Oh, it's getting there. Yeah. Let's have Sabine all the way from Germany. Okay, where do I start? Be of, Be of good cheer? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mea Baba says, among the many things the aspirant needs to cultivate, there are few that are as important as cheerfulness, enthusiasm, and equipoise. Just as when we worry, we are supplied with worrisome and unhappy circumstances, so too, if we are cheerful and do not choose to worry, we are programming things for us to be cheerful about. When we program good cheer, the causes for it will be supplied. It changes our inner and outer environment because it raises our consciousness and does not let worry, which is fear, into our consciousness. Jesus said, Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This means that if we are of good cheer, we too will overcome the world. Be of good cheer and you will overcome everything. People do not take this literally. They take their worries literally. Being of good cheer is a magical thing. 
because one can immediately bypass all obstacles. Baba within us is helping us in our efforts to disentangle from the world and we must accept the divinely magical effect of his overcoming of the world in us, which is his grace. Shall I go on? Let's see. Yeah, uh, yeah, go on to the next. Keep your spirits up. Initially, we are bogged down with worry. We must strive to be cheerful. Start with a cheerful face, a light heart. It is up to us to make the choice to be cheerful. Allowing cynical and negative thoughts to enter our consciousness lowers our spirits and contributes to low self-esteem. And getting involved in the petty things of life leads to depression. In a certain sense, we must ignore the petty things in life that keep getting thrown at us. We do what we must, such as carry out our duties and continue to pay our karmic debts, but we choose to have an attitude of cheerfulness while doing them. The formula, don't worry, be happy, is the key to happiness. In other words, you trust the master to provide everything. By following such a simple formula, great changes are brought about. It puts us on a spiral to a higher level of freedom, simply by keeping cheerful. A centrifugal force is created, which repels negative forces. It changes our focus, for, it changes our focus from the conditional level of all the opposites and everything being dependent on one condition or another, and we, come, we become free, free of worry. I recall in 1952 witnessing Baba parting with Kitty Davy, one of his close Western disciples, when he suddenly informed her that he wanted her to remain at the newly established Mayor Spiritual Center and help its director, Elizabeth Patterson, instead of going back to India with him. He made a simple hand gesture, fingers joined, hand and arm moving straight up, meaning keep your spirits up. We must do all we can to keep our spirits up, our self-esteem high, and allow Baba to work through us. So accentuate the positive no matter what. Refuse to allow worry to dominate your thoughts and feelings. Instead, allow happiness to predominate so that you are programming happiness. Ah, okay. Well, let's see. I think, I think we should, um, and let, oh, oh, there's uh, Richard there. It's for Marvin. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I was just uh, thinking, I read this through before, and I think this chapter is extremely valuable. Um, but uh, I, I guess what I'm going through at my stage of life is I'm reviewing my life, you know, what I've done, what's valuable, how I interact with others. But I, I, I think that where this ties in extraordinarily with Mayor Baba uh, is that uh, your demeanor, remember Baba said, keep a smile on your face. You know, you may feel like your stomach is gurgling and you know, you're know you out of sorts and all this stuff, but when you greet others, keep that, keep that cheerful nature up because you never know how you're going to really affect someone in the world. And I think this whole thing of thinking of Baba and not worrying so much, can impact people you live with, your next door neighbor. I think the Marconi airwaves of Meher Baba will affect other people. <laughs> but anyway, I, I think it's very, very important. This is extremely important for me. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll I'll hear from Marvin and then we'll have a few moments of silence. Uh, Marvin, you have to, you're muted. Mm. 
Still. <laughs> You're still muted, Marvin. Still muted. Okay. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a story about uh, my own life. Uh, 1956. This is before I heard of Baba. Uh, but when it has eleven. It has to do with uh, cheerfulness. Uh, yeah, I was I just turned twelve, and uh, I went to the uh, Museum of Science and Industry with my brother. Yeah. <laughs> okay, with my brother, and uh, he won an award. And uh, he said, uh, oh, but you, you won't be able to stay for the dinner because I only have one ticket. So you'll have to go home. And I said, okay. Uh, and this is in the city of Chicago. And uh, I really didn't know at that age how to get home. Uh, but I guess I would just take the bus, you know, and uh, ask the bus driver when I got on. Anyhow, um, I walked outside of this museum and it's a huge museum. And I started walking around the museum to try to find the bus stop and I couldn't find it. I just kept looking and looking. And all of a sudden I noticed that it was getting dark. It was October and uh, uh, you know, uh, it was late, you know, five, five thirty, six, And uh, I noticed there were 12 boys that were following me. Uh, and so I decided uh, I would slow down and let them pass. And then I'd go back to the museum and ask where the bus stop is. So I did that and, and four of them passed me and two of them came up on one side and two came up on the other side. And then the four others uh, kind of walked right with me. And then the ones that passed me started to slow down. So I was basically in a box. <laughs> and uh, I, the only thing I could think of was putting out my hands like this, you know, uh, like Jesus would do. And I had two quarters, and I put one quarter in each hand, and I stood there and looked up at the sky. And the boys took the quarters, and they searched my shoes, and they searched my pants, and they saw that I wasn't holding out on them, and they were laughing. They thought, what the heck is this boy doing? And I kept looking up at the sky and just holding in my pose. And... Uh, and they just kept laughing and then they started running away. And I put my shoes on and I started running with them. And the leader looked at me and says, what the are you doing, boy? And I said, well, you have all my money. So I figured I'd, I'd do something for you. You know, I'll, I'll set somebody up and you'll throw me a couple quarters so that I can go home. And he smiled, just a huge smile. And he stopped right there and realized just that uh, joy of finding another person that he could relate to put his hands in his pockets and he took out my quarters and he flipped them to me and he said, go home, boy. So this is my idea of what cheerfulness can do to change things around. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Anyone have a final quote? Yes, Jeff, I do. Okay. I have two of them, actually. Um, one a little shorter than the other. So I'll read the first one. 
Baba says, when you entrust your mind to me by constantly remembering me, there are no thoughts left on which the mind can feed. This fasting is the true and essential fasting. Jai Baba. And the second quote is, your job is to remember me. Everything else is my job. Jai Baba. Read them both again, please. Okay. <laughs> Sure. Okay. When you entrust your mind to me by constantly remembering me, there are no thoughts left on which the mind can feed. This fasting is the true and essential fasting. And the second quote is, your job is to remember me. Everything else is my job. Jay Baba. Thank you all for bringing your worries out on the table. Hello, Alan. I wanted to say hello to Alan down there in the in the corner. Alan <laughs> Manukian. Maybe. Hey, how's it going? There he is. Hello, hello. Alan. <laughs> Let me get my camera going here. There you go. Hey. Hey. Hey, Baba. Hey, hey Baba. Baba. During the pandemic, he looked like Baba as a young young man. <laughs> <laughs> he had to shave his beard and everything. I wonder if that'll ever happen again. <laughs> well, there'll be plenty of pandemics in the course of your life. The pandemic or <laughs> the hair? No, the hair, the hair, yeah. Yeah, the the hair. Hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Bob, you want to say hi, Adrian? Hi. Hello. Hi, Adrian. Hey. hey. <laughs> Great. Hey, Baba. Thanks for the wonderful um, sharing and uh, topic and mm -hmm. offering that you all made. It was really helpful. That was very helpful. Adrian, I just heard your music on your website. It showed up as films or clips or whatever. It's oh. so gorgeous. Oh, my God. It's so gorgeous. And Baba teams through all of it. I just want to say thank you. It's mm -hmm. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And how do, how, do you, Me too. how do we get your album? <laughs> okay, I'm adding, I want everyone to listen to my album because <laughs> I made it for Baba and I don't want people to not hear it. Okay, there we go. If you go to that website, adrianshamzad.bandcamp.com. It's in the chat. Then you yeah. can download it. And it's also stream my new album. It's called Wash It All Away. And it's it's streaming on um, all the streaming places. Cool. Thank you. Are you are you up for doing a song? Or are you... Um, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to talk about how I'm worried all the time and how I can't stop and how I don't know how to stop. And I have like eight minutes a day, maybe like scattered throughout the day where I don't think I'm worrying about anything. And then I just, I, I like, so maybe I did write a song about it one time. So I could sing it, I guess. Or, or, the or we could all just keep talking for another hour and a half until I get, you know, like get tired and like <laughs> just sort of avoid my anxiety by talking and then, you know, maybe what if I singing <laughs> and then just fall asleep. Yeah, at, at least you, when you sing, you're not worrying, right? So <laughs> not usually. That's true. Okay. Um. Well, I don't have any instruments nearby. They're all outside in the yeah. little music shed, but um. Uh, I have the song that I wrote called "Don't Be Worry." <laughs> um, you want to sing it? Yeah, I'll sing it. You don't have to leave. Well, it's not I'll, very dramatic. It's kind of like in your face. You it's okay. In my face. I'll just sing it at you, at you, not to you. All right. We just ate dinner, so. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, it goes like this. Um. I was thinking about my life. All the times I lost myself right where I was meant to be. The regrets, the missteps, the unsung love and the innocence all swirling in the space around me, in the air I breathe. But the voice within me is wiser now and shows the way and says, don't you worry about anything. I will be here, I will be waiting. You were standing on the pier. Life pushed you in when you turned your back. And now you're, and now you're sinking deeper and deeper in, weighed down by the memories, consumed by the past. But it could all change in an instant if you listen to the still small voice within telling you. Don't you worry about anything. I will be here. I will be waiting. You're all right. Don't you worry about I will be here. I will be waiting. You're all right. You're all right. Everything is gonna be oh, wait. Everything is gonna be all. I'm worried again. It, I, I was doing okay, but I'm worried funny, again. Sorry. Funny joke though. You said eight eight minutes a day. So instead of eight days a week, I love, I love, I love you. Eight minutes, eight a, day. minutes a day. So so eight are this is the only time that I'm not worried. Eight yeah. minutes a day. I have relief from existential dread. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, hey, um, so good. Yeah. <laughs> Someone <laughs> worry every day, girl. Yeah. It's always on my mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One thing I can say, girl, I worry all the time. All the time. Oh, <laughs> oh, worry. 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 Exactly. Worry. <laughs> I got so nothing but worry. worry. Eight I minutes a day. Worry. Oh, except eight minutes a day. <laughs> it's the only time that I'm not worried. This is good. I like that. Oh my god. So, I don't worry when I sleep. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, I think I have really worried soul dreams. I, I have a quick question. When we say Bob is going to work everything out. In my head, that means, oh gosh, happily ever after, or at least reasonably content ever after. But Baba works everything out in a spiritual way. So is there a disjoint here? Because if he it's hard, I, I struggle with worrying that what Baba means by working it out is going to be really hard and it's going to be painful. <laughs> Yeah, the, the trouble is 
his job is actually not to give us a nice comfortable life but to wake us up and waking us up uh, uh, you i mean uh, val used to say sometimes it takes a nightmare to wake you up from a, a pleasant dream <laughs> so I, i've got but you know, there's one person right whose, whose birthday is coming up, and uh, this person wanted me to sing a song for them, a particular song. So um, I'm going to give it a try, and and then we'll get to Tony. And this song actually was written. Uh, Ruth Apple is there, Ruthie, and this was uh, a song by a friend of hers. She came and in the 70s and uh, sang this and wrote this song at the center. Oh Baba, oh Baba, I'm making by your side Oh Baba Oh Baba Won't you help me to see that you're as close to me as I is so weak my strength is all wasted on pleasures I see come on your stallion and risk me away my longing nearly breaks me how long Be the answer that I'm longing for That your divine spirit now knocks at my door I'm coming, I'm coming to let you in To feel your sweet presence Come near, oh please, I'll drink of your essence, I'll fall on my knees. Come be my sculptor, for I'm made of clay. Mold me and shape me in your to thank all the singers tonight for oh, yeah, bringing cool. us closer to God. <laughs> what a feast. Thank you. This is the real communion. Yeah, this is great. You know, it, it'd be greater if we were all in person, but you know. You know, I've been sitting here with my eyes closed, pretending that we were all in the same room. 
I recommend it. It it does something more than just the screen does. All of a sudden my heart opened up and it's like, wow, everybody's here, we're all together. Yeah, and what I found is that, you know, I a lot of these people that I had never met before, some of them were Indian, when I met them, they were exactly the same person that I've been relating to for a couple of years on Zoom. We were really, con it was the very same people. I didn't find someone different from what I, the, the, from the person I'd been relating to just on this screen here, so. Except uh, uh, Anthony Cortez, I thought he would be a little taller than, uh, <laughs> and there was someone else I was surprised at too. Uh, but but the, the personality was exactly as, it was the same personality I was relating to in uh, real life. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Well, uh, we got Tony now. Uh, one last thing, and then we better go. So it was, it was, it was Anne's comment about, uh, you know, you say, don't worry, and Baba will take care of everything. And it reminded me, I'll, I'll share this. It's a much longer story. I'll just pick out parts of it. I, in 93, thanks to Don Stevens, I, it came about that I put my love life in Baba's hands. I said, you pick her in no conditions. I, 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 I said, you know what's in me, what my needs are and so on. And, and Baba, it created this first, he foreshadowed it in a dramatic way. Then he created this relationship and it went from like the end of August till about January of uh, 94 and uh, it was intense, it was amazing. It was everything I thought I ever wanted. And, uh, but there was some weird stuff going on and I realized this is not healthy, I should get out. And I, Baba said, no, love her more. And anyway, it finally blew up. And I was like, I poured myself into it a zillion percent. And now I was like, what the F, you know? And I was, so, uh, Finally, that was in January. So in June, I got myself to India and um, got up to Baba Samadhi. And internally, I'm pouring out this whole thing. And as I'm walking down from the Samadhi, I have the guitar around my neck and I'm strumming this riff and I'm noticing it. And I'm going, I'm supposed to learn this. So I strummed it all the way down the hill. And the next day I saw um, a comic book called Mercy. Uh, it, it, it's connected to the story, I can't say. Yeah, so I, I went over to the lagoon cabin and um, there was a guitar there and I just started singing. I think I recorded it or I, I must have recorded or written it down. This song called Mercy. And it's probably the best song I've ever written. And the next day we're in Merizad and um, Mani has been told by Gohar, Bani is sick. She has the flu or something. And she's been told by Gohar that she's got to stay in bed. So here we are all on Baba's porch, knowing that Mani is there listening to us, but she can't come out. And just before it was time to go, someone asked me to sing and I sang Mercy. And um, I think it was Mira who was there with her violin and she played violin with it and it was breathtaking. And then we left and I'm walking back towards Monley Hall to get on the bus. And Casey Cook comes running after me and she said, and she clearly had a, a message to deliver, a mission. She said, Monty wants me to tell you that's what the big doctor ordered, <laughs> that song. <laughs> and I was like, wow, thanks. And she goes back and I'm walking again towards the Monty Hall, towards the bus. Casey runs out again. I had not discussed with anyone why I was in India, what issue was up for me in when I was in India that time. I had talked to Baba about it, but no one else knew about this girlfriend, about this, every anything. Casey runs up to me and says, Mani said, tell Tony not to worry about a thing. Well, was I happy? Oh man, that was assurance. You know, that was an assurance. This is gonna work out okay. And I got back to New York and I was like, really? And things were not working out okay. We had no contact as of January. She didn't want it and I didn't do it. I didn't, got, but it's a community. So I found out that she was with this guy. She never, we've talked about having a baby. She never wanted to have a baby unless accidentally, but that's another story. <laughs> and so it was an issue. And now not only was she together with this guy, but she was pregnant, <laughs> you know, it was clear. It took a long time, 
But when I put my love life into Baba's hands, I said, you pick her no condition. He was leading me to this, to Zeke, who I've been with for the last 26 years. And he had to clear out a whole bunch of stuff. But when I took it that way, like tell Tony not to worry about a thing. Okay, it's going to be fine. No, it, it wasn't fine, but it is fine. <laughs> it took four years for that, but yeah. So, All don't worry. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Tony, and thank you all. And uh, we'll, oh, um, I, I'm, like I say, when I, I'm going to go to England and India and, uh, I guess we got to think possibly what we might do um, uh, if we want to keep the Sunday night going. For, I'm going to be gone for six weeks, so uh, I've kind of floated out various things. We could get some people to speak, or, or, or uh, I'd ask Goer if she might want to just be a... a to go on with with it and then have other people chime in and support so uh a, a quick show of hands what uh, anybody um want to have these to go on for the next six weeks let's uh can, effort and right, whatever can i toss a condition in because last week i voted let's continue and let's keep reading the book but jeff you bring so much to this as because of you and your time with Baba, but also how you knew Darwin. I'm wondering if we, especially if the book's going to end while you're gone, maybe we could put the book on hold for six weeks and just keep meeting with other reasons, if if other people like that. I mean, if we if we could get some, uh, like, people to speak or some topics or whatever... I know. I mean, we we need we haven't heard Goer's story in a, a good while. That's one. I might be able to get Irwin Luck. I might be able to. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll see. Uh, I'll see what I can do, or I can leave it up to you folks. Because also, I was thinking Nashua Nalavala, Goer knows, and then there's Marijuana Mystery. We could we could uh, have people kind of come and share. But it's what about? What about Nan? Is Nan going with you or is she she's yeah. staying? Yeah. I love Nan's story. Nan's story is great. But um, it's like having guest hosts like Johnny Carson used to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like Don Rickles. You know? um, <coughs> let's see. <laughs> uh, well, like I say, next, next Sunday is the last time. So I would. Um, yeah, we might have to figure this out sometime or other. What what's the what's uh, the consensus? What what do we what do we have here? Do you want to like have uh, have some uh, people come and speak? Well, well, why don't you put someone sort of in charge to to organize to keep it coherent? You know, when we're organized, Diane's a good leader. And uh, uh, go here, of course. Yeah, Diane and Goer, that, that could be a winning combination. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> We're out of the country for a few weeks, too. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, we'll be here for a few weeks, but just not at the beginning, right? No, not at the mm -hmm. beginning. Well, well, we'll have to kind of figure this out by next uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. I, I I vote for guest hosts, you know, yeah. and then Jasima would be the tech helper, mm -hmm. and then Jasima would stay on as the you know the tech yeah. helper, tech yeah. helper, and um, and then it could be an hour or an hour and a half depending, how, you know, how people want to connect with each other. Yeah, I'll see. I mean, some of these people met Baba, so that's you know I think you would like that very much. Mm -hmm. So I will, um, I'll try to, oh my God, on top of everything else, I'll, I'll see what I can do uh, as far as scheduling mm -hmm. some people in. There are not many people left who have met Bob in this country. I mean, I don't know, maybe 20 or something like that. I, I think Winnie Barrett is another suggestion, a good speaker, Winnie Barrett. 
she's been around. Yeah, she's been around. I I, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I haven't seen her in ages, but yeah. So I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Thank and you, Jeff. Jeff, what about the twins? I wish I could. Just they don't come on Zoom. Huh? Uh, they did once. They did once. Uh, I think a couple of years ago on the Bombay Center, and they were really great. Yeah, yeah. They, they are superb. So we tried. Yeah. Anyway. If you have a connection, go for it. But yeah. my connection didn't. They said they wouldn't do it. Yeah, I think. Okay. Oh. Well, anyway, I will. Um, hey, is anyone uh, close with um? Shireen, uh, Baba's niece. Mm, I, was, I was thinking of her. Also, uh, how about Sheila, uh, Jeff? Is, is, wow. Would she be available? Sheila um, Fenster. Uh, Fenster. Mm -hmm. yeah. That I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, is, I don't, yeah, they're somewhere in California, aren't they? Or, they might be, yeah, or Oklahoma. I, uh, I'll see what I can do. And yeah. if anybody uh, get, uh, can contact any of these people, uh, mm -hmm. just let me know. Okay. All right. I, okay. I'll try. I'll give it a try with some of them, Jeff. Okay. All right. All right. See you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jay Baba. Thank you.